Okay, welcome back everyone. Um, last time we started talking about um, partial derivatives. Um, we have introduced the, uh, here's the definition. So if you have a function of, uh, so the definition works for function of any number of variables. Here is the, here's an example for, for a function of two variables. So if uh, x and y live in domain D, then the, uh, if the following limits exist, then they're called partial derivatives with respect to x and with respect to y um, well, at point x, y. And they are denoted with this uh, several ways, right? So it's either partial f over x, or df over dx, uh, or uh, del x, and so on. So we looked at some examples last time of the partial derivatives of, of functions. And uh, then we calculated, uh, well, then we talked about high derivatives, right? So the, if you have a, um, well, uh, turns out that there are four different ways, four different orders in which you can calculate a second derivative uh, and in particular, the, the so-called mixed terms, right? So like mixed derivatives when you differentiate with respect to x first and y second, or the other way around, a priori give you different functions. Uh, and the theorem which we uh, announced yesterday said that if the function is defined on an open disk uh, and if the uh, fact that if the function continues uh, on that open disk, then for every interior point of the disk, um, the the uh, the the, the uh, uh, mixed partial derivatives in different various orders are are equal. Right, and um, well, you can check that the examples that we had last time, where the function was not continuous. Um, actually provided different uh, values for those partial derivatives. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay. So the, the homework is out. It has many problems in it, so I encourage you to start working. Um, a big, big chunk of those problems is uh, um, is, com is computational. There are very few conceptual ones, but otherwise it should be fine. Okay, so uh, uh, today we'll talk about uh, tangent uh, planes. Tangent planes to surfaces. And so uh, in the book, it's subsection 14.4. Mm -hmm. um, well, so when we talk about the function of one variable, let's make a quick, quick reminder here, then the so if there's a differentiable function of one variable, then the, uh, we can study the derivatives at every point, and the geometric meaning, meaning of the derivative was that it provided the slope of the tangent line uh, at each point. And so this equation was, uh, this, this line was described by equation y, um, y is equal to, hmm. I did put the not disturb, so I'll get again my, uh,
So if this point had coordinates uh, x0, y0, then y was equal to y0 plus the derivative of a function uh, of y prime, y was called equal to this function y equals f of x. And we have f prime of x0 times x minus x0. Right, and uh, the reason why this was the case is because the, um, this coefficient here, the derivative of this point, measured uh, how quickly the function increased or decreased, uh, and it therefore determined the slope of the tangent line. So like this instantaneous behavior of the function, the velocity like, at which the value of the function changes as we change the value of the argument. In a uh, function of two variables, we expect to, be, to, to see similar behavior, although now we need to track the uh, change of the value of the function uh, according to the two different uh, uh, sort of as, as x and as both uh, arguments of the function vary. And so well, let me just try to draw something here and then we'll probably make some plots in Mathematica because those are much prettier and um, and then we can get back to, to writing. So say you have a uh, graph of the function, which looks like, oh, I'm gonna try to draw some dome like that, right? So like it's, um, so there's a shape like this, right? And then the, uh, what, what one, we, we select a point, Coordinates, uh, let's see, x zero, x zero, y zero. So then corresponds to point somewhere here. Oh my god, no. make, make, make it a bit higher. Right. So this point has coordinates um, f, uh, x. In three dimensional space, we have coordinates x0, y0, f of x0, y0. And now we can see what happens as we vary the, so let's slice the, uh, the graph by the plane, which is parallel to the xy plane, uh, actually, uh, which is perpendicular to the x axis, which is here. Look like um, like that, um, and in the section we get say so curve like this, and then that will be complement. There will be another. A dissection along the plane which is perpendicular to the y axis. So it should pass through the same. Yeah, my, my, my painting is not really, it's not really very representative. So the, okay, let me try to, let me try one more time. It meant to be, yes, uh, remove those orange. It should be like this, right? It should be in line with the so it's a plane like that, right? And then cut cut graph like this. And then the other one would do would we'll, we'll, we'll do it like that. Okay. So uh, we need to study what happens as the, uh, uh, how the function uh, changes, how it grows uh, as we change the, uh, both x and y, right? And in this case, 
we'll have, uh, well, we need to study two different types of factors, uh, which uh, measure how quickly, how quickly the function changes in x direction and in y direction. So the first vector will have a slope, the partial derivative relative to x at this point, and the second will have the slope uh, that the, it's a partial derivative relative to y at that point. At that point, and then every two vectors, of course, they belong to a plane. So uh, we can draw a plane which uh, con containing these two vectors, uh, and we should call this a tangent plane, um, tangent plane to this graph at that point. Yeah, so I'm having trouble visualizing the plane. Uh, explain why, uh, yeah, sure. So the, uh, okay, so let me, so, uh, uh, let me write the equation and then I switch to mathematics, okay? Uh, so it will be, be you know, drawing in three dimensions is not really, um, it's not really easy on this, on, on, on this thing. So the, the, the uh, so, you, you take a point on the, on, the, on the surface, right? This uh, green point over here, right? And then you uh, draw the first orange plane cuts through this point and point x zero, and it's parallel. To, uh, and it's parallel to the. It's orthogonal to the x axis, and the second plane is orthogonal to the y axis that passes through that point. Okay, and then you're looking at the graph graphs of two functions that are obtained by. Uh, by this cut, right? So the um, the first plane cuts the cuts the surface along the curve, and the second second uh, plane cuts the surface along the curve. Okay, and then we are treating each of those curves as functions of single variable. And so this first uh, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, this first curve would be, would look like what? It's the uh, it, the function it's you know it's y is equal to f of well not y excuse me we should, we should probably call it z yeah, so it, it's z right so it's z, z is equal to f of x comma x zero comma y and so it's the it's how the graph changes it's, it's how uh, well, x zero is fixed y is, 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 is a parameter y is a variable and the second one here is uh, z is equal to f of x y zero. Okay. Sarah, does it clarify things? Yeah, sure. And then we'll, we'll, we'll make some pre prettier plots in Mathematica. But uh, anyhow, so once you fix x zero, right, then uh, the analysis of this of this graph it is reduced to to the previous one, right? So then we can write the equation for for the tangent line. This uh, uh, in, in in the first uh, sort of uh, in this uh, in the first plane, you can look. You can write it like this. You can say that the uh, so, uh, the, so it, let, let's write equations for tangent lines. So um, in this plane, I uh, would have. It's z is equal to z zero, which in this case is f of x zero y zero of plus f prime of y times y uh, y minus y zero, right? Because x x, x is fixed when you when you're looking at what happens as y changes, and similarly uh, we. In the orthogonal plane, the tangent line would look like this. Okay. Uh, and now uh, we want to combine it together. So 
uh, the, 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 these two vectors, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so the, uh, what, what, uh, what might I draw it again? I'm just going to draw, draw on the tangent plane. So this is the time we it, then it touches the surface underneath it somehow, right? Like that. It touches at one point. Right? And uh, one tangent vector. This is another tangent vector. So it's, it's partial derivative relative to x, and this is the partial derivative relative to y, right? uh, and we can ask ourselves, can we write the equation uh, for this tangent plane uh, at, at this, uh, which touches the graph at this point with coordinates so x0, y0, f of x0, y0. So what we can claim is that the equation for the tangent line, tangent plane, excuse me, at point x0, y0 is this. So like uh, we can sort of bring these two equations together, uh, which would look like this. It will be z, uh, so z is equal to z0, which is you know, f of x0, y0. And then we just add them together, right? So uh, the uh, it's, uh, <clears throat> so the, uh, well, uh, maybe I should uh, 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 let me write with a minus, right? So z minus f over zero y zero is equal to, uh, is equal to f prime of x at this point, x minus x zero plus f prime y x zero y zero uh, times y minus y zero. That's the, the that's the tangent line equation. Right. Um, so the so the reason why we can add this up is like is you know if you look at the uh, coordinate system. If you look at this at the court, if you think of the this tangent plane as I, as I do it here, then the uh, the the you can make a local coordinate system when uh, well f x so f f prime x and f prime y are the um, they go along the two proportion uh, they go along the two vectors which are orthogonal to each other. So like it's like an x and y coordinate system here, and the the uh, then we just then we just calculate the vector. Uh, then we just calculate the, the we add these vectors together. One vector will, will have component f prime times x minus x zero, and the other vector has component um, f prime y y minus y zero. What is the reason why we have two equations for tangent lines, but only one equation for tangent plane? Well, we have two equa equations for tangent lines because there, these are different tangent lines. These are tangent lines in the in, in orthogonal directions. Okay, so uh, we looked at the uh, at the curve that li that lies on the surface for, for constant x, and then we looked at a different curve which lies on the surface surface with the constant. Uh, at a constant y, right? And they have they have their own tangent line and tangent vectors, right? So now uh, the, these two tangent vectors they lie in a plane, right? And the claim is that 
the plane is plane given by these two uh, uh, plane, which is given by these two vectors, is the uh, is is the tangent plane. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, well, let's maybe draw some pictures. And, yeah, maybe yeah. Let's let's let 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 let's first, let's take an example with the calculation, uh, and then we can draw some pictures. In in in, in mathematics example. Uh, so you have function z is equal to square root of one minus x squared minus y, y, y squared. So it's a um, upper hemisphere, it's the northern not hemisphere, right? If it, it's with a plus sign, and let's say you want to find the tangent line, tangent plane at a point one half, one half. All right, so let's, uh, let's calculate the partial derivatives. So, uh, well, you can also call this f, f of x, y, right? This is the, also like the function. And uh, yes, f prime of x is equal to um, minus two, uh, two cancel, sorry, so it's minus two x over two root one minus x squared minus y squared. Well, it's just minus x over square root. Uh, and f prime y is equal to similarly minus y over all the square root. So let's evaluate this at points uh, one half, one half. So both due to symmetry, there will be the will be equal to each other, right? So here it's f y prime of f y, f f prime x is equal to f prime y of one half one half, and that gives you what it's minus one half over root of one minus uh, one half. That's each of them is one quarter, so it's what it's one over one half divided by one over two. It's minus one over one over two. Right. So therefore the equation for the plane will be and yeah, we we'll also need to evaluate the function at this point, right? So f of one half one half is equal to uh, one over one over two. So the four equation looks like this z is equal to one over two minus one over two x minus one half minus one over two y minus one half. Okay, let's let, let's plot it. So um the So we'll plot them together. So 
first with the root of and then the other uh, what was this it's uh, one over two minus x minus minus y Well, we could, we could have simplified it, right? But uh, yeah, so uh, 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 let's simplify it here to be. Um, that was the that was the um, that's the equation for the plane. Okay, and then the x is minus one one. Because that's where this hemisphere lies, and y is between minus one and one. Yeah. See, it, uh, well, it, it must be, <laughs> it must have been a, a hemisphere, but uh, somehow the mathematics decided to squish it a bit. So let's change range. Um, Zero, zero to one. Well, this way, I mean, it, it cuts it a little bit. So, yeah, uh, maybe let's go to two. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Somehow it does. It, it uh, you got the idea, right? It, make, it makes it like a make, makes it like a dome. But anyhow, so point uh, one half, one half. Well, it's it's somewhere here, and uh, well, it does give you the equation for the tangent line. So here, uh, uh, this is the point, right? So the, uh, the, the, you can, you can dissect it by the plane, each of the plane would dissect the surface along a semicircle right and the uh, values of the derivatives partial derivatives in each direction are equal in this case i now equal to negative one over two So that's the tangent plane. Questions? Right, so uh, now let's talk about the differentiability uh, of the function, right? So the, um, in, in, um, in function of one variable, we had, we had a claim that if you have a, well, if, if the derivative exists uh, as that limit, right, then the, uh, then the uh, function is differentiable at this point well, we, we can we can give a similar definition definition over here, right? So the um, so it's the differentiability of functions of of, of of many variables. And now, well, um, as as you seen from the uh, from the picture, right? So uh, we can think of a tangent plane. Uh, as a uh, linear approximation to the function at, at the small neighborhood of, of a given point, of, of a given point. S -s same way the tangent line in the, in the analysis of function of one variable approximates the function uh, to some extent, right? So it shows you that uh, if you zoom in really close, if the function is differentiable, uh, it, its value changes linearly with the argument. Same is true 
in this example. Same is true in for functions of, uh, of, of, of many variables, right? Uh, and then you can, the, in such differentiability is the ability of the change of the argument uh, shrink to zero in a special way, excuse me, the change of the function to go to zero in a special way as you, as you change x and y, right? As, 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 the, as x and y go to zero. So maybe I should uh, first explain this in terms of the function of one variable again. So in, in, in one variable case, see y is equal to f of x, right? And then we say, well, okay, the function was the, the, the tangent line was the equation for the tangent line is equal to, so y minus y zero is equal to f prime of x zero, x minus x zero. So that's the tangent line. And now we get to reproduce the curve again. So the, that's the graph. That's the tangent line. So the, so we have value, uh, so this is x zero, this is x. Uh, and then the actual change of the function is here, right? So it's the uh, delta y, uh, which is the change of the function. It's the small vertical segment here, which of course is the, the farther away x is from x zero, the more it's different from, from this, right? From the, uh, from the difference between the, from, from this segment, which, uh, which, is calculated by, which is calculated by the tangent line, right? So therefore, this equation, although it's true precisely for the tangent line, it's no longer true for the function itself. Right, so, so for the function, you would write this. You would say that, uh, well, y uh, minus y zero is only approximately equal to this. So the, uh, which is, you can say it like this, it's f prime of x zero times x minus x zero times some function phi of x, Right, um, such that such that uh, limit uh, phi of x as x goes to x zero is equal to zero. Right, so phi of x is some unknown function which sort of measures you the distinction between uh, the difference in the values for the tangent line and difference for the values for the function. Right, so the condition for differentiability can therefore restate it in the following way that, so you can write this pretty much for every function, right? And then if as if the following, if this function f phi of x approaches zero, as x goes to x zero, uh, then it, uh, so it, if the limit of the function phi of x as x approaches to zero is, x zero is equal to zero, uh, then the function is differentiable. Okay, so this is maybe slightly non-traditional way to uh, introduce differentiability, but it's uh, more natural in the multivariable world. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, since you know the, uh, uh, you're familiar with Taylor formula, right? So from previous classes, of course, uh, if the function is differentiable and if it's differentiable infinitely many times, then um, phi of x will be the remainder of the Taylor series of the function. Right? So it would be, it would look like what? F double prime of x zero over two factorial, x minus x zero squared and so on, right? So uh, you, you can see here that the, the leading term in this correction and in this contribution starts from x minus x zero squared, which is smaller than x minus x zero when the difference is, is small. Okay. So 
So now let's write the definition for for, for, for functions of my, for, for many variables. So now let's say, again, let's, let, let's do the explicit form, formulation for functions of two variables. So let z is equal to f of x. Um, we say that uh, f is differentiable. Differentiable at the point x zero y zero uh, if uh, for all points x comma y uh, inside inside a small disk. Uh, centered at uh, x0, y0, uh, the following formula is true, is that the uh, z minus f, well, z is equal to f x0, y0, plus f prime of x of x0, x minus x0, So let's write this more carefully. F prime of y f of zero y zero times y minus y zero and then plus um, plus some function you know big phi of x comma y such that limit Is, is equal to zero. Okay. Um, yeah, so actually, uh, we need to uh, just maybe one more. Um, so it, 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 it should go fast, right? So, so it's what phi, you know, like this is a phi. Um, Yeah, let, let, let me, yeah, so it's, it's, it's not just goes it's not, not just goes to zero it goes to zero uh, faster than uh, than delta x and delta y right so the uh, so it must be high order so yeah, such that the uh, uh, yeah so limit yeah x y x phi of x zero divided by the uh, Put my space here. By the uh, square root of x minus x zero squared plus y minus y zero squared uh, is equal to zero. So it should go, it should approach zero faster uh, than actually I should write it here as well for the function of one variable phi of x divided by x minus x zero goes to zero. So that, that, that the approach is zero faster than the, uh, than the linear term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can check in your book, in your book it's, it frames slightly differently, but uh, let, let me just keep it as, 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 gen, as general as, as possible. Okay. So in other words, uh, the, if you say it in words that the, the uh, Differentiability means that, well, let's re rewrite it as so delta z is equal to f prime of x delta x plus f prime of y 
delta y plus uh, some correction phi of x y, uh, which goes to zero faster than uh, delta x and delta y as, uh, as as delta x and delta y approach. Right, so this is the condition for differentiability. Okay. Questions? So how today the number of questions is a bit less, but maybe. Um, well, I hope it doesn't sound too abstract, but like the sort of the uh, we need to have at least some formal um, some. A formal setup to um, to do the calculations. Okay, now how do we get phi again? So uh, phi is an unknown function. What we uh, what we know about phi is that the uh, it's some function that goes to zero faster than uh, delta x and delta y. Right. So think of it as a quadratic or higher correction. Right. So like in 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 the example of the of the Taylor formula, so an example of a function of one variable, right? So I think always about Taylor formula. So Taylor formula, of course, requires more, right? It requires that all higher derivatives also exist. But here, so uh, the if if you only require the first derivative to exist, then the following thing is true that this the change of the of the for the function y minus y zero is linearly proportional to the change of the of the argument plus a small correction. And the only thing that we know about the small correction, that it goes to zero faster than the linear, uh, the next of x minus x zero. So again, uh, if the function was uh, differentiable infinitely many times, then you can just uh, write the Taylor formula, Taylor series expansion around x equals x zero, and this phi of x will be, a con uh, will, be will contain uh, all higher terms in the Taylor expansion. Operator, which operator? No, phi is not an operator, phi is a function. Okay. Uh, similar, similarly, in the example of a function of two variables, again, the change of the, uh, of the values of the function delta z is linear combination of delta x and delta y with coefficients being the partial derivatives plus a function which approaches zero faster than uh, faster than linear. Okay. So uh, there is an, there is also a Taylor formula for uh, multivariable functions. Uh, we'll we'll write it I think uh, or maybe in maybe tomorrow, maybe later. Sort of. So again if 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 you, if, you uh, if the function is differentiable many times, right, then you can write Taylor polynomial uh, up to that order, and there will be some remainder which will satisfy the same condition, right? So this remainder function should uh, go to zero faster than the, uh, than the last term. So this condition about faster, uh, uh, this condition is important, right? It's, it's not just the, the, the function goes to zero, it should, it should go to zero fast enough, right? Otherwise, if it say goes to zero as fast as x minus x zero, then well, I mean you compromise your derivatives, which means that your linear approximation is not valid. Okay. So make a theorem. This theorem. If the function was differentiable at a point, then it's also continuous at the point, right? So that's uh, that's easy because you know it just follows directly from the definition. But we have we can make a more precise statement about partial derivatives. So if um, if the partial derivatives f prime x and f prime y exist uh, near, which means which means at the small neighborhood 
both x0, y0, uh, if they exist and continuous, at this point, then f is differentiable. And that point. Just to emphasize a couple of things, let's say near uh, means that we have a, well, we're defining, this, we're looking at some uh, neighborhood so it's set of, you know, uh, x minus x zero squared plus y minus y zero squared less than some delta, right? It's a, it's a disk centered at x zero, y zero. Uh, with radius delta and uh, x, x, y, x, y is some point from that disk. And so your function well, is defined everywhere. So you know, there's a surface that looks like this. Uh, and then you're studying the, well, how it behaves uh, inside that disk. So, the, the derivatives need to be defined uh, in the, on the disk for some value of delta uh, and continuous, uh, and the, those derivatives need to be continuous at point x0, y0, which mean, means again that the limit of those functions as we approach the given point from x direction from y direction would be equal to the value of those functions at this point. That's the continuity condition. Um, yeah, so that suffices to, to claim this. Uh, 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 let me not prove it, the, the proof is more or less straightforward. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's, it's the same, same, uh, yeah. So it's basically, it's the, in, in the function of one variable, this statement is a, is a tautology, right? Which is like you're saying that the, if the, what we define f of prime exists, then the function is, and it's continuous, then the function is differentiable. Um, here it's a little bit more subtle, but uh, nevertheless, the formula and the statement is true. Questions? Okay. So let's, let's, uh, let's look at an example. Um, function say uh, f of x y is equal to x e to the x y, right? And then consider point x zero y zero, which is equal to one one comma zero. So uh, so we can say this is the this is the function, and then we can use this to approximate. So we can use the tangent plane, right, so, uh, linear part of the expansion to approximate. So we will we'll calculate its derivatives at this point, and then we'll find the approximation. at point, say, uh, we'll move away a little bit, 1.1 1 .1 and uh, minus 0 0.1. Find a linear approximation. Okay, so let's calculate the derivatives. F prime x is equal to e to the x, y plus x. Uh, uh, sorry, x y e to the x y, right? Then uh, f y is equal to x squared e to the x y. 
So if you evaluate it at one zero, that gives us uh, one, right? Because it's exponential to the zero plus zero and derivative uh, f y at one zero is equal to, to also to one. And so therefore uh, the, the, the equation for the tangent plane will be z and then the, the, the value of the function at one zero is also equal to one. So z minus one, also z equals one plus uh, one times x minus one plus uh, y plus one times y minus zero, or it's equal to x plus y. Yeah, so the what is the point for the linear proxy for the linear yes it's a uh, 1.1 comma uh, negative 0 0.1 yes that's right so therefore a uh, linear approximation which we expect to be quite exact here, more precise here, because it's a differentiable function. So yeah, so clearly uh, derivatives exist and they're continuous functions um, in some small neighborhood of this point. So linear approximation gives you, so yeah, we, so we need to, uh, yeah, so this, uh, so we need to evaluate x plus y at, um, well, we're gonna introduce the function L for linear. So L x, x, y is equal to, x plus y, which in this case will be equal to uh, 1.1 minus 0.1, which is one. And then the actual value of the function, we can, we can calculate this, the uh, true value of the function gives us what it's this so f of 1.1 negative 0 0.1 1.1 times e to the uh, negative uh, I want to try to calculate this without calculators. It's negative point uh, eleven, right? Um, negative point or eleven, and then, well, of course you can uh, it can be the mathematical, but just for the fun of it, let's calculate it using the Taylor formula. Um, so, so that's uh, approximately equal to what it's one point one, then it's one minus point eleven. Right, and then there are, there, are, there are corrections plus 0.11 squared over two and so on. So, uh, yeah, well, um, so it's 1.1, .1, approximately 1.1 1 .1, uh, multiplied by, uh, you know, 11 squared is uh, 11 squared is 121, and then we need to divide divide by, by thousand. So it's minus 0 0.121, right? And that gives you 0 0.9 uh, eight and so on. Okay. The the the, the true value, if you just punch the calculator uh, using mathematics, it's it's 0 0.98. Uh, 
Okay. Questions? Oh, uh, it just came out in the calculation. So see, uh, the equation for the for the tangent plane works like this. It's z equals to z zero plus f prime of x, x minus x zero, plus f prime of y, y minus y zero. So now you plug in the numbers and then you get that the tangent, tangent plane in particular in this example looks like z equals to x plus y. So you use that formula for the linear approximation. It's basically you're forgetting about the, the, the surface and you only live on the tangent plane. And we see that the value uh, was off by, well, uh, 2%. So linear approximation gave us one. The exact formula is less than, uh, it's actually even less, it's 1.5%. Right? So it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good linear, it's a pretty good approximation. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, let's make maybe a quick break. Uh, maybe we can resume at 11.10 or something. Good.
Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> Hope everybody is back. Now, um, our next story is uh, differentials. Uh, and before we go, I'd like to maybe plot this for you in Mathematica and then we'll start from there. Make another plot. So the plane was X plus Y. And the graph was x okay so these are those three good plots again I, um, So we are, yeah, so we want to find the tangent at uh, x equals one, y equals zero. So see x goes from zero to two and y from minus one to one. Yeah, so see here the, uh, the blue, blue plane here, right? It represents the, uh, is the, is the tangent plane and the, so here's this point is a, uh, one zero, so x equals to one, y is equal to zero, and then this graph kind of exponentially grows uh, to the right, uh, and then kind of de decreases to the left. So uh, what we have done here, we have uh, evaluated it at uh, uh, well, what we, we evaluated the, the value of the linear function, the plane, and the and then the function itself at point uh, 1.1 minus 1.1, 1 .1, so which, is, which is somewhere here. And again, so the, the precision here is not great, but uh, if you want to can draw the graph with better precision. So, uh, yeah. okay, so uh, now let's, uh, let's change, let me change it a bit to this straight for the, I guess, okay, great. So, Say two. No, let's keep, let's keep it as one. Right. So now, um, Let's find uh, more qual qualitatively the difference between the graph uh, and the function, uh, between the plot, uh, between the surface of the function and uh, the, the plane. So this brings us to the notion of a differential. So the, okay. So remember the blue is the tangent plane, the, the orange is the, is the function itself. Now, see so what this is the point um, where we want to calculate. Uh, we want to calculate the derivative, x zero, y zero, uh, and the uh, let's say for the for the sake of argument, this value here is is delta x. So the this point has coordinates um, x comma y zero and here and uh, 
the, the length of the of this segment is delta y, so so that, uh, this this point has coordinates. Oh, let, me, let me put it down here. Sorry. So that's uh, x uh, y zero, and that point will be x comma y. And so we introduced the notation that delta x is equal to x minus x zero. It's the same way. Delta y is y minus y zero, um, and uh, what we want to compare is that the uh, the 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 like the difference right between the uh, the change in the uh, so. If you, if you look at the tangent plane that gives us linear approximation, so it's the it's the first part of the uh, but it's the, it's the linear part of the difference, right? So um, let's try to get get the formula. So the delta delta z is equal to f prime of x delta uh, delta x plus f prime of y delta y and then plus this correction phi of x y. Uh, so uh, what we want to do, we want to write it down as the uh, uh, now and then now let's let's take the limit as the delta x and delta y goes to zero simultaneously. Right, so delta x goes to zero, delta y goes to zero. Uh, and then, um, as we discussed earlier, this correction phi of x y will go to zero faster than both delta x and and and, and delta to, and delta y, so that the uh, delta z will approach some limit which we call d z. Right, uh, and d z here is the is the differential. So dz is calculated from the linear approximation of the function, and delta z is an actual difference between uh, between those values. Okay. Uh, and the, 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 this plot shows you that the uh, this calculation uh, is obtained by uh, there's a delta x component here, and then uh, there's a delta y component here, OK? So the, the definition of the differential is the following. Is the, I'm going to rewrite it again on the, on the notes. <clears throat> so dz is equal to f prime of x dx plus f prime of y dy. And then it's, uh, here's just the limit. Uh, so uh, it's, an, it's, it's a small infinitesimal quantity, which is the uh, linear combination of differentials in x direction and y direction uh, with coefficients uh, being the partial derivatives. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's let's write it down and calculate some examples. Yeah, there you go.
the differentials of functions of many variables. So the definition. Uh, so uh, we have assume that the function f is differentiable and it has uh, partial derivatives um, at, at a given point, then dz is equal to f prime of x of x, y, dx plus f prime y of x, y, dy. Or you can write it in standard, standard notation, so it's df over dx dx plus df over dy dy. So if you wish, that's like the linearization of the, it's the equation for the tangent line uh, to the point only, only written in terms of differentials. And, and again, sort of the analogy with, the, with one variable is transparent. If you write it, uh, you can write dy is equal to f prime of x dx. Only now, um, here we have two variables, and therefore we need to add these two differentials. Sometimes this is called the total differential. We're not going to use the adjective total too much. Um, the, the, the look, the, sort of the shape of the formula reminds you the uh, chain rule, right? On the, there are different, D, different Ds involved, right? So there's a partial derivative and the differential. So the, uh, if, if there's a partial derivative involved, you need to, you, you need to take a sum. Okay, let's look at an example. Say well, there's a polynomial function f of x y like this. What is df? Well, dz or df? If yes, z is equal to f of x y. The differential would be so. First, we take derivative, partial derivative with respect to x would be 6x to the 6 plus y dx plus uh, partial derivative with respect to y, which is x plus, well, there's a 7 here. y to the 5 dy. This is the differential. This can be straightforwardly ge generalized to functions of more variables. So let f, let uh, the z be a function of n variables. And let's assume that all partial derivatives exist exists then dz is equal to f over x1, dx1 plus and so on plus f over xn, dxn, or it's the sum of df over dx i, dx i, i goes from one to n. So you, you would need to add differential in every direction. Okay, now let's talk about chain rule. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this formula for differentials and the uh, we will need it to so we're going towards understanding how to parameterize surfaces by two parameters, right? Um, so in order to do that, we need to know how to change 
how to make change of variables uh, in differential expressions that involve functions of many variables. So that will, to do that uh, properly, we need to understand how a chain rule is generalized to the multivariable setup. Yeah, so in function of, of, of one variable, the chain rule worked like this, right? So if you had the function y of x, and then x is a function of t, so the differential dy was equal to uh, so d d uh, So, so the derivative, excuse me, so dy over dt would, would look like dy over dx times dx over dt. Um, so you would, uh, you would just apply the chain rule to the function uh, itself. And then if the t is a function of some other variable, then you would sort of keep rolling the chain rule. Uh, for, n, for n variables, it works. Uh, Similarly, only now that we have several uh, terms in the sum. So the multivariable example. So the multivariable case. So we have, um, so let's say z is equal to f of x, y, right? It's a differentiable function. Um, and let's define x equal to g of t and y is equal to h of t. And so now, so that uh, both x and y are differentiable functions of a new parameter t. Okay, uh, then the differential dz is equal to df over dx, dx over dt. So notice the different uh, different d's here. It's right? so one is the one is the cur one is the partial derivative of that, or is the well, total derivative of a function of one variable. Df over dy, dy over dt. Okay. Well, let's give a proof. Uh, it will be a good exercise for, for, for everyone. So we'll, we'll give a proof using the uh, <clears throat> using the, the definition of a differentiability that we had used uh, before. Um, we slightly changed it. So proof. Since uh, uh, f is a differentiable function, the differential function at some, but at any point, right? At say x, x zero, y zero, we can write the uh, the change of z in terms of this finite differences, right? So it's delta f over delta x plus delta f over d, df over dx, df over dy, delta y, right? And then um, plus this, uh, plus the phi, right? So the function, but now let me present function phi like this. It's equal to phi one of x, y times delta x, and then plus phi two of x, y 
times delta y, uh, where so or such that uh, limit of phi one is equal to zero as delta x and delta y go to zero, and also equal to limit of phi two. As delta x and delta y goes to zero and equal to zero, so uh, this uh, kind of takes care of th th this form of ex this form of uh, uh, expression takes care of the fact that the the remainder goes to zero faster than the, uh, than the limit. So we called this this gadget here before we called uh, big phi of x and y. Yeah. Again, so if you think in terms of Taylor formula, that will be the remainder of the Taylor series. But we'll get to that later. To prove this theorem, we we'll, 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 we won't need uh, any specifics about those functions little phi little phi one and little phi two, except that they disappear as delta x and delta y goes to zero. Okay, now let's divide it by delta t. So delta z over delta t equal to df over dx delta x over delta t plus df over dy delta y over delta t plus phi one like this, uh, and then send uh, delta t to zero. Um, and then just collect the terms, right? So take the limit when delta t goes to zero. So here, dz over dt, by definition, is that is that is that very limit. Limit as delta t goes to zero, delta z over delta t. Uh, so that's equal to df over dx. Well, uh, well, you know the rule, right? So the limit of the sum is sum of the limits, if limits exist, and then uh, if there is a, uh, uh, the, the coefficient, which does not depend on delta t, you just take it outside, right? So this will be dx over dt plus df over dy dy over dt uh, and then plus limit as delta t goes to zero uh, phi one times uh, dx over dt <clears throat> uh, plus limit as delta t goes to zero by two d y over d t, right? But the uh, uh, the fact the, so since we change the parameterization, the fact that delta t goes to zero also implies that delta x and delta y goes to zero, and so um, so. The parameterization works like this: when x equals x zero and y equals y zero, t is equal to some fixed value t zero, right? And then um, delta x and delta y go to zero implies that delta t goes to zero. So therefore, this disappears. This is equal to zero. This is equal to zero, and we get uh, and we get our formula, uh, which is which is over here. Let's do an example.
So z is equal to x to the four y plus x y squared. And then we change a variable so that uh, x is equal to sine two t and y is equal to cosine t. Um, so we had this example before. It's, the, it's one of those um, figure eight shapes, right? If you draw it uh, as a parametric curve um, uh, in t. So let's find uh, the derivative of dz over dt. And so first to calculate the partial derivative uh, of this function over x gives you four uh, x cubed y plus y squared multiplied by uh, dx over dt. Well, let's calculate it here. So derivative of the x is equal to two cosine two t derivative of y is minus sine t so the second term will be derivative with respect to y which is x to the four plus two x y uh, times minus sine t. And you can just plug, plug everything back. So it's uh, four sine cube two t times cosine t. Well, sorry, multiple multiplied by uh, two cosine two t. <clears throat> and uh, plus sine to the fourth twice t plus two sine two t cosine t and times minus sine t. Now, that would be the answer. That would be like the expression in terms of parameter t only uh, that, that uh, gives you the derivative of the function uh, relative, to, uh, relative to this parameter. So what is the meaning of this? Well, it's, um, you draw, so remember the, remember the graph, right? So the, uh, this parametric curve that we had looks like this. It's a figure eight shape uh, graph, right? And now you are forcing your, um, so it's, 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 I think of it as a point particle, right? So that there's a point particle that's moving uh, along this trajectory in the X, Y plane. And now you calculate in the image of this figure eight uh, by the function Z, right? So this figure eight will become it will lift to three dimensional space. It will be some shape in three dimensions. Uh, and then you are calculating the velocity of that particle as it moves in that, uh, as it moves over that curve. And so uh, let me try to do it again. So you have some surface like this, some polynomial surface given by some polynomial equation. And then this figure eight would somehow get lifted like this. Uh, and then say the particle was here, it was moving with some velocity and the value of this velocity will be equal to uh, dz over dt. It's like the, well, it's, 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 it's velocity in the, in, 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 in the z direction. It's like by how much the, the height um, of, of this curve, by, by how much the z coordinate in this plot changes as your parameter moves uh, uh, as, as, as this particle move along, uh, moves along the figure eight. Okay. Okay, good. 
Um, that was the first example of a chain rule when we had only one parameter. Uh, so you see, if x and y they have they describe only one parameter, they only have uh, they depend on the one parameter. There is there is a relationship between them. So here, x and y they uh, will only have a curve that uh, that was the, the which was parameterized by these two equations. Um, but now let's introduce two parameters. So that will actually allow allow us to describe surfaces. So now uh, let z is equal to f of x and y uh, be a differentiable function. Uh, of x, y, and then we know x, well, x will be a two parametric uh, we parameterize x and y by two parameters. So x is equal to g of st and y is equal to h of st. So these will be two functions of two variables, right, which are differentiable functions of both variables. of S and uh, S and T. Okay. Um, so now you can, um, well, now the, the question that the, the meaningful question would be to find the partial derivatives. So we can say, what is the DZ? So now, now what? Now we have the function, which is, it depends on a bunch of stuff, right? We have function Z, that depends on x and y. So z is the f of x and y, and x itself is a function of uh, s and t. And y is a function of s and t. So s and t appear <coughs> in both functions over here. So here's the formula. The partial derivative of z over s is dz over dx times dx over ds. You can either write dx over ds or dg over ds, it doesn't matter. And then plus dz over dy, dy over ds. And similarly, derivative with respect to the second parameter. would look like this. So uh, these are chain rules that you apply uh, steadily uh, one by one. The proof of this form of this theorem uh, is analogous to the proof of the previous one. It just requires a a uh, little more, a uh, little more calculated. But the, the, the idea should be clear. So you have, you look at all the places in the in the original function where you see where you see the where you see the parameter with respect to which you are differentiating, and then you apply chain rule if needed. Okay, let's do an example. So z is equal to you know, e to the x plus y um, times sine x, right? And then uh, x is equal to s t squared, y is equal to s squared times t. 
Uh, let's calculate, let's evaluate both derivatives. The dz over ds is, I'm looking at the formula above. First, we take derivative, partial derivative of the function over x. That gives us cosine, cosine x and then multiply by uh, dx over ds, which is d squared, then plus dz over dy. So here it will be only one term times the dy over ds, and it's just two times t. And you can simplify it, right? So for example, you can take out the uh, exponential, right? Exponential appears in every term and plug in the uh, parametric dependence. Here it will be uh, sine plus cosine plus that plus the rest, right? So it's sine st squared plus cosine st squared plus two s t sine s t squared. Yep, that's the derivative and then the dz over dt. So yeah, there'll be more, there'll be a lot of exercises in homework. Uh, I encourage you to do them. Uh, although here I think there shouldn't be any problem. Yeah, so we know, we already know what dx over dz is. Uh, d, me, d over dx, we just need to evaluate the another derivative. So it's e to the, well, let's do x plus y first, e to the x plus y sine x plus cosine x multiplied by dx over dt, which is 2st plus uh, e to the x plus y sine x times dy over dt, which is s squared. Uh, and then you could just plug it in, let, uh, uh, plug in all the values, so let me not write it. Uh, okay, my was just doing this. So it's e to the st squared plus s squared t multiplied by sine st squared plus cosine st squared. Uh, sine goes with the factor of uh, yeah, so you can uh, collect them to collect terms together right so you can collect sine here and sine here uh, squared times s squared okay so it's a straightforward uh, calculation. Okay. Uh, and then finally, if you have a function of many variables, I can write it here. So if z is a function of x1 through xn, and each of those x's, so xi is a function, say, gi of of, of uh, some number of parameters, the, the number of parameters can be different. You can have parameters t1 through tk. Uh, so there are n variables and k parameters, right? So then you can define the derivative dz over d ti for every ti, and it will, give, it will, will be dz over dx1, dx1 over dti plus and so on plus dz over xn, dxn over dti, or you can just write it as a sum. Uh, so j goes from 1 to n, partial derivative dz over 
dxj dxj over dti right so i varies from one to k so uh, values of k and n are independent right they you can have a bunch of parameters uh, uh, yeah and then there will be as many terms in the sum as uh, as the number of uh, as the number of variables as the number of variables but then the uh, uh, yes the, the there will be as many equations as the number of parameters so if you want you can put them into big rectangular matrix of uh, k by uh, k by n Yeah. Questions? But yeah, so it's, more, it's mostly just applying a chain rule. Whenever you see a parameter, you differentiate over that parameter. Uh, keep in mind the, the, the chain rule. Let's do another practice exercise here. So today we have a bit less questions, but I guess just uh, too technical. Uh, today's lecture is a bit more technical. So uh, let uh, G of S and T be the function which satisfies the, the following functional relation. So G of S T is equal to uh, some other function f uh, of s squared minus t squared and uh, t squared minus x squared, s squared. So g, g is a function that, 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 that is defined like this, and then the f is uh, differentiable. Uh, show that the G satisfies the following differential equation in, in partial derivatives. Uh, so it's T dG over dS plus S dG over dT equals to zero. Okay. So let's denote these two variables, these two combinations, x uh, and y. Right. Uh, of course, they're not unrelated, right? So y is just equal to uh, y is just equal to minus x, but it will be easier to do the, to do the calculation. So then, dg over ds. Right, is equal to df over dx, um, dx over ds plus df over dy, dy over ds. That's the chain rule. And right, so, uh, well, df over dx, we don't know what it is, right? So it's just a function, some differentiable function, so the derivative exists and it's some continuous function. Um, <clears throat> and the times the derivative of x over OS, it's 2s, and then plus df over dy um, times uh, minus 2s. Okay, analogously, dg over dt will be, so it's df over dx, dx over dt, minus df over dy, dy over dt, and that gives you plus df over dy times 2t. And then uh, you can see here that uh, if the equation is satisfied, so you can multiply 
multiply this by t, multiply this by s, add them together, and check that, that uh, everything cancels. Right, so you get, uh, no, no matter what the coefficients are, right, uh, the, no matter what the, the partial derivatives are, df over dx and uh, df over dy, uh, this, uh, they, they, they cancel each other. Is that df over dt? Uh, there's never df over dt anywhere. Um, right hand side of what? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's dt, yes, yes. So it's dt, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's partial t, like t always appears in, um, it's a function of many variables, it's, 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 it's a partial t. Okay. Yeah, so see, it's, uh, it's clear. Ooh, it, it just shows you that the argument of this function f are, well, they're not independent, right? So because, you know, the, the one is the negative of the other. And it turns out that if you, uh, turns out that they, they're bound by this uh, differential, uh, the partial differential equation. Okay, good. Um, so it was probably enough for today. So we have we did a lot of uh, technical calculations. So uh, I, I, I encourage you to start doing homework, and, and then we'll continue tomorrow. Uh, and so bring your questions. We can probably do some more exercises, and then we'll talk also about gradient uh, vector directional derivatives, gradients. Uh, yeah, and stuff like that, and look simulation. Okay, great. Uh, thanks for coming. So we'll I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.